I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Beloved, we welcome all those who are attending this, our Sunday morning worship service for the first Sunday in the month of April. Yes. To all those who join us here in our sanctuary, and of course to all those who continue to join us by way of our media channels. Oh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. It's by your mercies, Lord, yes. that we haven't been consumed, Lord. Yes. We don't take it for granted, Lord, but it's opportunity. So help us to worship and to praise you, Lord, as you said, in spirit and in truth, yes. Father. Yes. We pray that you will bless this service, Lord, as only you can, Father. And make it into what you will have it to be this day, Lord. Make it into what your people need, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to bless our pastor as he comes on your behalf this morning, Father. Bless him and anoint him anew, Father God, to speak on your behalf, Father. Send a word for your people today, Lord. Every song that's held up to you, Father, we ask you, Lord, to anoint Alicia this day. Yes. Speak through song this day, Father. Yes. The praises that come up to you, Father, allow blessings to come down this day. Let your presence be felt in this place, Father. We ask you, Lord, to be with those who are on their way. Be with those, Father God, who are at home viewing right now. Every person under the sound of our voice, we ask you to bless this day, Lord. Not allow us to leave this service the same way we came in, but to leave on higher ground, Father. Have your way this day, Lord. Have your way, Father. Because if you do that, Lord, everything will be all right, Father. It's our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Jesus Christ he said, take no thought for tomorrow. It's not important trying to figure out what tomorrow is going to be. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Know about him. And don't worry. He'll take care of all of our tomorrow. We're not ready for our affirmation of faith. 
Christ's creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture for this morning will be taken from two chapters that are found in the Gospel according to St. Matthew. We will begin in chapter number 27, starting at verse number 57 through 66, and then we will conclude in chapter 28, verses 10 through 15. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewed out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone by the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day that followed, the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from, so that the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Matthew 28, verse 10. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. Well, when, now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. When they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. I've read in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 57 through 66, and also Matthew, chapter 28, verses 10 through 15. May the Lord add a blessing 
to the reading and to the hearing of this holy word. Amen. May we now stand and join in our congregation on him. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Save the wretch like me. Once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, let us sing to the glory of Almighty God.
The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. Let all the earth keep silent. Before him. Somebody ought to say Amen. 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 really ought to say
the Lord's mercy. Yes. And yes. we are not consumed. Yes. Yes. His mercies are new yes. every morning. Yes. And when you think about that, yes. it starts off saying it is by the Lord's mercy yes. that we are not consumed. Yes. Yes. Lamentation, a book that is named but for the fact that the people were crying. Mm. They were wailing. Yes. What were they wailing about, Brother Pastor? Mm. They were crying and wearing, mm. wailing because of the destruction of Jerusalem and Judah. Mm. And yet, in the midst of those five chapters in Lamentation, mm. somebody realized mm. that, hey, yes, Jerusalem was destroyed. Mm. Judah was destroyed. Yes, yes. Many thousands upon thousands of our kinsfolks were killed. Yes. But it is by the Lord's mercy yes. that we are not consumed. Yes. Yes. Think about it. A week ago, there was a great earthquake on the other side of the world in Taiwan. And hundreds upon hundreds of people lost their lives. We're here today. And of course, of the Lord's mercy. with a 7.8 magnitude earthquake. All those tall buildings all downtown and even buildings up here in the Bronx would have fell down to the ground. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Great is thy faith. Now, Alicia, you're not going to give me the change of my story like somebody else did a few weeks ago. And I just had to share that with you. Yes. You to begin to connect the dots. Yes. As I have often told you here at Father's Creek, when you see disasters happening in other parts yes. of the country, yes. mudslides yes. in California and fires that have gone on for years in California and hurricanes and tornadoes in many places of the country, I've always told you, just because you live in New York, don't think you're so safe. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come once again yes. into your holy divine presence. We come before you because there is no place else we can go. You have seen fit to reveal to our hearts, minds, and souls that you're God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, your God and your God all by yourself. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. It is in you that we live, move, and have our being. Therefore, Father God, we showed up as one more time just to say thank you. Thank you for life and a reasonable portion of strength. Thank you for our lying down last night. And while we slumbered and slept, we placed angels by our bedside, commanded them to watch over us all night long and kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We don't take that for granted. Early this morning, you woke us up to a brand new day, full of new mercies. And so we're thankful to you for that also. Now, Lord, have your own way. Oh, yes, Lord, have your own way. For truly, thou art the Father. We are the clay. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, verses 12. And 13. When they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And when they, the chief priests, were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel. They gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. 
I'm going to use for a subject this morning, the big lie. The big lie. We started off by reading a portion of scripture that was recorded in the 27th chapter of Matthew. And by the way, may I say this? We are on the verge at the beginning of another series. I don't know how long this series is going to be because we haven't worked our way through it yet. But we are embarking on another series. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed the series we just came through. And, and so I've been led to embark upon another series. And I already got a glimpse some of the things we're going to be talking about over the past several next several weeks that will also relate to things that we talked about in the past series. But for this morning, we are here at the event that had occurred, which we refer to Good Friday, the crucifixion. Jesus Christ. And we see that a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea, who is said to be one of Jesus' disciples, after the death of Jesus, he runs quickly to Pilate and says to Pilate, Can I have his body? In fact, scripture says that he begged for the body of Jesus. Pilate commanded that the body would be delivered to him. He took that body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth. And he laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewed out of rock. And then he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and left. Matthew says that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting over against the sepulcher observing these events. Then Matthew switches gears. He takes us into the courts of the chief priests and Pharisees. As they come together to Pilate, listen what they say to Pilate. Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. Now let me just put a pen there for a moment. It is interesting to know how the Lord's enemy Remember what he said. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, they're on the money. The, the enemies remembered what he said. Well, brother pastor, why why do you want to underscore that? Because even his own disciples did not remember what he said. His own followers didn't remember what he said. How do you know that, brother pastor? Had they remembered what they what he said, they would have been waiting for him. They would have had a a, a, a night out that Saturday night, mm -hmm. waiting for the arrival of Sunday morning. There would have been multitudes around the sepulcher. Yes. They would have been watching their watches or watching the sun come up mm -hmm. and saying, well, he said he's going to get up again. Yes. And, and it's third day. Uh -huh. And we're sitting out here. We're going to greet him. We're going to meet him as he gets up from the grave. No, they were all scattered. Yes. They had hid themselves. Yeah. They had ran away Fulfilling, fulfilling the prophecy that is recorded in Isaiah chapter 53, which says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way. But his enemies, they said, We remember what he said. Now, notice, they did not quote what he said, but they understood what he meant. He said, destroy this temple 
And in three days, I'm going to raise it up again. And when he actually said that, his distractors, his enemies said, this, this temple took 42 years to build by, by Solomon. How are you going to raise it up in just one day? They remembered what he said and they understood that he wasn't talking about the physical temple. He was talking about his body. Yes. Yes. So having understood that, they go running to pocket. We remember that that old deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. Therefore, Pilate, we want you to command that that sepulcher be made sure until at least the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error will be worse than the first. Did you catch that? They are confessing that they messed up. They're saying if the disciples come and steal his body away and say he's alive, that that last error will be worse than their first error in crucifying him in the first place. Pilate says to them, you have your watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. Sounds like a little bit of sarcasm there to me. Don't you think? You have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. In other words, Paul was saying, in so many words, you could do anything you want to do. But based on what I've heard about this man, you can put all the soldiers, all the stones, anything you want to hold them down. But if he said he's getting up, Paul says, I believe he's getting up. You go on your way. Go, go, get out of my way. Get, get out of my sight. Go your way. Make it as sure as you possibly can. Because you must remember, if you read the scriptures carefully, Pilate never wanted to crucify Jesus. Pilate did everything within his power not to crucify him. That's why he had him beaten. He figured in his mind, if I have him whipped and beaten all night, and then I come before the people the next day, and they see this, this Jesus all, all raggedy and torn with blood and and, and scars all over his body and I give them a choice between this old Jesus that they say they love and Barabbas who was standing there, they're going to say well give us Jesus, they're going to have pity on Jesus and say release him yeah. he never wanted to crucify him yeah. and, and so they cried out when he gave them the choice, give us Barabbas yeah. and he said well what should I do with Jesus yeah. they said crucify him crucify him and he still hesitated to the point that they had to say, if you don't crucify him, he has claimed that he is the king of the Jews, and if you don't crucify him, you're not a friend to Caesar. Yeah. And Pilate yielded, but he was afraid of Caesar. You know something? Sounds like so many things that are going on today. Yeah. People who know better yes, yes. are doing wrong and evil things yes. just because they're afraid of somebody else. Yeah. Sounds very familiar. Yeah. After all, we are talking about the big lie. Yeah. And yes, we're talking about the big lie that happened over 2,000 years ago. But I got news for you. That big lie still exists today. Yes, yes, yes. And so, you know the story. On the third day, he got up from the grave, and he appeared unto the women, and he told the women to go and tell my disciples they will meet me in Galilee. And before Matthew closes out this 28th chapter, which starts off with the risen Matthew says that on that day, some of the guard, some of the soldiers came into the city and told the chief priests and Pharisees what had happened. And the chief priests and Pharisees said, we can't have this. So they decided to give the soldiers 
large sums of money. Now for the betrayal of Jesus, they just gave Judas just some crumbs. But in order to keep the big lie going, they gave the soldiers large sums of money. And they said to the soldiers, don't worry. If this comes to Pilate's ear, we will persuade him that while you slept, his disciples came and stole him away. Now you know something, that don't make any sense whatsoever. If Pilate commands a group of soldiers to stand watch over a tomb, they are putting their life on the line. If anything happens within that tomb or outside that tomb, that's not supposed to happen. They are instructed to lay down their lives to, in order to carry out the orders that they got from Pilate. And yet, all of them are going to say, hey, we all fell asleep at the same time. And his disciples came and stole his body away. What a big lie. And yet, Matthew says this lie is commonly taught even unto this day. Big lie. Big lie. They are only doing the chief priests and the Pharisees, religious leaders. It's funny how similar that is to today. There are masses of religious leaders who are supporting the big lie. Even though the liar himself has said so many cruel and wicked things. Even though somebody said the liar himself in order to raise funds tried to start selling some sneakers first. And I guess the sneakers didn't pay off in the way that the sneakers should pay off. And so he decided that he's going to sell the Bible for $60. Saying that America ought to start praying again. Well, I got news for him. We've been praying for a mighty long time. I, I mean, our, our, our people, when, when, our, when, when our ancestors hit the shores of this country, they were already praying. In fact, I got news for you. They were praying while they were coming through the Middle Passage. They were praying when they were stolen from their tribes and put in chains and went all the way from one part of the world to another part of the world. They were praying for over 400 years. Our people have been praying. They prayed before in the 17th century, the 18th century, the 19th century. They prayed, they prayed during the days right after the, the World War II when they had the nerve to put guns in our people's hands and tell them to go over and fight an enemy that they never knew, that never did them no harm. And when that war was over, they came back and they came back to towns that said, right on. Yes. You need to go to a water fountain, right only. Yes. Yes. You need to go get something to eat, go to the back door. Our people have been praying for a mighty long time. We know what 2 Corinthians is. And yet, this big old lie is trying to sell by But Jesus told them about this. Jesus said concerning this lie and concerning the fact that he was one who gave the truth. He said in John chapter 8 verse 44 talking to the disciples of the liars in his day. He said to them, starting really in verse 42, he said, if God were your father, then ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, 
but he sent me. He said, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Listen to what he says. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now on what basis did Jesus say those words to the Pharisees and Sadducees and the chief priests right to their own face? Well, he said it because he was there. He was there in the garden. Where God commanded the man in the second chapter of Genesis. And he said to him, he said, out of the ground the Lord made, God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, and the Lord said to Adam, of this tree, of this garden, you could eat of all the trees, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die. Mm -hmm. Wasn't long before the lion came around, mm -hmm. dressed up in the suit of a serpent. Mm -hmm. And that liar said to the woman while she was alone, she lion said to her, Hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree? of the garden, mm -hmm. the woman responded to the serpent and said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. God says, you're going to eat it. If you eat of it, you're going to die. The serpent says, he shall not surely die. The serpent went on to say, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. God said, you're going to die. The serpent said, don't believe God. You won't surely die. Big lie. Started right back here in Genesis. Been going all through the pages of the Old Testament. Pick it up when we get to the New Testament. And my brothers and sisters, that big lie and lies like it are still here today. But that's all right. Because I know a man. I said I know a man. That said I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say I am a way. No, he said I am the way. In other words, you, there are those who think there are many ways to get to God. Jesus said, no, no, not, not so. I am the way. The only way. I am in the truth. The only truth. Everything said by anybody else other than me is liable to have a mixture of lie and falsehood with it. But I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. My brothers and sisters, I'm glad that they called us before they started calling us disciples. They started calling the early church children of the way. Yes. We are offspring of the way. We are part of the way. We are part of the truth. Because Jesus declared, if ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. 
big lie. Yeah. Don't be deceived. Mm -hmm. Don't be deceived by the big lie. Yeah. The chief priests, religious leaders, mm -hmm. say, go out and tell the people. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I believe deep down in my soul he is risen as he said. I don't care what nobody says. Don't come to me with no junk and no lies. He's alive. And not only is he alive, but he lives forevermore. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, yes, he is. Heaven and earth might pass away. But not one jot. Nor tell of God's word shall pass. Aren't you glad this morning? Aren't you glad that somewhere along life's journey, God saw fit to reveal to your hearts, minds, and souls that He is God, God Almighty, God in the person of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Oh, yes, yeah, some storms may come your way, like Alicia sung earlier this morning. You may not know anything about tomorrow. Tomorrow may rock you from side to side. In fact, before this day is gone, storm clouds may come into your life. But one thing be assured that when the storm clouds come, you still able to say to the winds and the waves, peace be still. And unless you get this wrong, you may not always have peace on this side. Your soul will have peace no matter what. But yes, our flesh is, 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 is made up of things that will toss us from side to side. But the Bible declared that if you're in him, he'll give you that peace, that passive understanding, that peace that don't come from the outside in, that peace that starts on the inside and goes out. No matter what may come, no matter what may happen, you have a home, yes. eternal yes. in the heavens. Yes. I tell you, that's all right. Yes. I'm not going to believe that big lie. Yes. It was the same passage that said that he said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. He promised, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. And if I go, I personally will come back. I ain't going to send Gabriel or Michael for you. I'm personally going to come back and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Paul declared to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You talk about a good day, a happy day, oh, happy day. The big lie.
said in Jesus' own words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Is there someone in our midst today that God has revealed to your heart, mind, and spirit that he is your Lord and Savior? Won't you stand right where you are and remain standing? Or is there someone here who would like to become a member of the family of Fountain Spring Baptist Church? We ask you to stand also. If you're viewing today and God has come into your life, made himself your Lord and Savior, we rejoice with you right now. And we encourage you to find a church where the word of God is being preached and taught. And if you can't find a church in your area, we ask you to contact us at the address on the screen and we may be able to help you. But whether you're here today or whether you're viewing, if not today, we encourage you to keep coming Keep viewing, and we hope and pray that soon the Lord will make himself the Lord and Savior. God bless you. Amen. Amen. This being the first Sunday in the brand new month, we are now going to prepare for our communion. Gospels declare that Gospels declare that when Passover approached, the Lord's disciples came to him and inquired where he wished to keep the Passover. He told two of them to go into the village there next to them, and there they would see a man carrying a pitcher of water. He instructed them to follow that man into whatsoever house he enters. Say to the good man of that house, where is your guest chamber? He will show you a large upper room. Go there and prepare that we might keep the Passover. At the evening, the gospel say that he came with the twelve, and after they had kept the Passover, kept the Passover feast, as commanded by God through his servant Moses, while the children of Israel were still in Egypt. Jesus took bread in his hands and lifted his eyes and gave thanks to his heavenly Father. He broke the bread and as he passed it to his disciples, he told them that this bread represented his broken body. He passed it to them and said, eat, eat all of it. When they finished eating of the bread, he took the cup in his hands and when he had once again given thanks to his heavenly Father, he told them that this cup represented his spilled blood, which would be spilled for many for the remissions of sins. He passed it to his disciples and said, Drink ye all of it. Then he says, As often as you do this, you do show forth my suffering until I come again. And so his church, his body, his bride, and for over 2,000 years, been observing this ordinance, which was commanded by Jesus himself, in the keeping of the Lord's Supper, in the sharing of the bread and the cup. 
And as we have said so many times before, and as we will continue to say, we are totally incapable of blessing, sanctifying, consecrating these elements that lay before us. And so in prayer, we join and go to the only one who is able to bless, the only one who is able to consecrate, the only one who is able to change these elements from a common use to a spiritual use. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us pray. Jesus, here we are once again, your sons and your daughters, your offspring. Once again, on this first Lord's Day in the very new month that you have allowed us by your mercy and your grace to see, we assemble ourselves around this table that contains the symbols of your suffering, the symbols being that bread, for indeed you told us that this bread represented your broken body. That symbol is this cup, but you told us that this cup represented your spilled blood. And so as we prepare to take of this bread and take of this cup, Father God, we ask that you will never let us forget just how much you have suffered and how much you gave of yourself so that we sinful men, women, boys, and girls might have a right to the tree of life. For that, we continue to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You didn't have to do it, but we are so glad that you did. You didn't have to go to Calvary, but we're so glad that you did. You didn't have to suffer and stay on that cross, but we're so glad that you endured the shame of the cross for the joy that is set before you. We are so glad, Father God, and we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Bless and change this bread, this cup from a common, ordinary use to a spiritual use. And as you change it, keep working on us. We're not all that you want us to be. We haven't reach perfection yet, but we're on our way. We're striving. We're asking you for your help, for your mercy, for your grace to help us to be a little bit better today than we were yesterday Amen. and a little bit better tomorrow than we are today. Mm -hmm. Father, help us to be conscious of the suffering of others. Do whatever is in our power to relieve that suffering <laughs> so that one day we hear you say, I was hungry, and you fed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And we will say to you, when did we see you naked, hungry, or in prison? And you'll answer, and as much as you've done it to one of these, the least of my people, you did it unto me. Come now and enter into the kingdom that has been prepared for you. Jesus, this is our prayer. In your name, amen. 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 <coughs> After they kept the Passover feast, he took bread in his hands lifted his eyes and gave thanks to his heavenly father, broke the bread, passed it to his disciples and said, this bread represents my broken body, which is broken for you. He said, take and eat you all. When they had eaten up the bread, he took the cup in his hands. And when once again he had given thanks to his heavenly father, he told him that this cup represented his spilled blood, which would be spilled for many for the remissions of sins. He passed it to those, his disciples, and said, drink the oil. The Bible says when they finished singing, eating, they sung the hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. We have no Mount of Olives to go out into. 
we have a sinful, wicked city to return to. Therefore, we are to watch as well as pray. And as we go, let us continue to sing that old song. I know it was the blood. We don't take it lightly, Father God, that you gave us health, strength, and life, Lord, to be able to press our way out once again. And we're thankful, Lord, for the strength, the peace, the joy that just come for me in this place, Lord. There's something special about this place that's called by your name, Lord. We thank you for your word that we receive this day, Father, the big lie, Lord. But we thank you for your truth. Overrules that lie, Lord. Amen. We thank you, Father God, for that truth, Lord. That I'm just our Savior. Yes, He died, but He got up again, Father Amen. God. And thank you, Lord, that you revealed in your truth that He's coming back again, Father. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor for the grace and strength you continue to give him. 
to lead your people in the way that you will have us to go, Father. Continue to rest your hand upon them. Keep his mind, his body, and his spirit strong. We pray that you'll continue to give them the wisdom needed, Lord, to lead your people, Father, to help us to become all you will have us to be, Lord. As our pastor said, Lord, we are not all that we desire to be. Not all, Lord, that you mean for us to be yet. But keep on working on us, Father. Keep on molding and shaping us and making us into all that you will have us to be. Keep on getting the glory out of our lives, Father. As we come around this altar, Lord, first of all, we thank you for what you've done already, Lord. We thank you for the prayers that you've answered already, Father. May the blessing you bestowed upon us, Lord, those who we have held up to you, Lord. And now we come before you, Lord. We, for whatever may come our way, whatever challenge may come, may come our way, Lord, help us to meet it, Lord, in your grace and in your mercy. This little light you placed in us, Lord, let it shine brightly in this dark world, Father. Continue to have your way this day, Lord. Bless the remainder of this day. What you've given us, help us to take it out of this door to share it with those who we come in contact with, Lord. We love you, Father. And we'll forever bless and praise your holy name. We give you the glory and the honor and we give you praise because you're worthy, Lord, to be praised. And we come before you now, Father, in that name that's above all other names. That name is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Just before I give the benediction, there are two things that I do want to say. Not only to those who are with us in the sanctuary, but also to all those who join us by way of the media channels. They say there's going to be an eclipse of the sun, eclipse of the sun on tomorrow. If you are living anywhere in that pathway where the eclipse will occur, please do not look directly up at the sun unless you have those special glasses that they have produced in order to keep you from losing your eyesight literally and to tell you the truth um I, personally i wouldn't even take a chance putting on those special glasses yeah. amen i watch it on tv or watch it in the news later on i wouldn't trust anything that they're making somebody might make something and try to pass it off for the real thing it might be something that's false and for a few minutes of being able to see what god is doing you can lose the sight for the left rest of your life but the next thing I need to say, especially to those who watch us by way of our media channels and also to some of you who do watch by media, first of all, um, we thank you for joining us wherever you are over our media stations. For any reason you have a problem with YouTube, switch to Facebook. If you have that available, maybe you can pick it up there. But may I also say, if there's ever an incident that you turn on in about 10.30, and we're not on and you stay on for about five or ten minutes you don't see us it is possible that one or two things could have happened either we are having technical problems with our with our system which we have no control over and we're not able to get the proper signal in order to send our services out to you or it almost happened today one of the two people in charge of our media both of them might not be here on this occasion. So if if it ever happens that you turn into YouTube or Facebook and you're there at 1030 and 1035, 1040 goes by and you don't see nothing, chances are we're not able to broadcast anything to you. And I just want to let you know that we're now ready for our benediction. <clears throat> now under him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Amen.